Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1005. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, 1003 to 1006, click on the link below the video. Hey, uh, this video, 1005, is a follow up on 1003 and 1004. In all these videos, we have some name. There's a column with duplicates, and we want to either conditionally format or look something up given a certain occurrence. So here we want the second occurrence of fill. We want to get that. 0.58 rate and deliver it to the cell. If I say select the third instance of fill, I want to get that 0 .00, 0 0.88 and return it to the cell. Back in 1003, we had a sorted column and the formula was a little bit easier. We used match and index. All right, so what are we going to do? Well, we have duplicates. So we're going to build inside our formula. We'll see two ways to do this. It's an array formula that at its heart will have a, an array of relative positions, right? Because that's relative of this list, that's relative position. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So Phil is sitting either at relative position five, seven, or whatever this last one is, uh, 12. So inside our formula, this is a formula element that builds uh, an array of relative positions. And for many lookup formulas, this is required. Now, row, it'll tell you row. Uh, two or three or four, we are giving that argument right there more than one value. So the row function will spit out more than one answer. Now, this is a uh, function argument array calculation. Now, right now, that would give me two, three, four, five. In fact, if I highlight this in F9, you can see it gives me that array of row numbers, which is not what I want. I want relative positions. So I'm going to subtract row. Now notice, this is a bunch of uh, numbers, an array of numbers, and this is a single number. But this single number, 2, will be subtracted from all of those. F9, you can see that gives me one too few, so you add one back in. Now this is a good way to go in most cases when you're creating an array of relative positions. If you were to insert rows up here and push everything down, this would still deliver 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, et cetera. All right, we don't want all of them. We want just the ones that are equal to fill. So I'm going to, inside the if, build an array logical test. I'm going to say, hey, that whole range, are you equal to fill? Right? So this is going to give a, an array of trues and falses, F9, Control Z. That right there is all the relative positions. The trick is we want to filter all of these relative positions. So I'm going to leave this value if false out. That way, because we left it out, it will insert falses for any time it finds a relative position that's not equal to fill. This little formula element is F9 filtered only the relative positions that match fill. Now, remember our goal is to use index to look up the third occurrence of fill. So we'll put this array of falses and relative positions into the either the small function or the aggregate function. And we'll say, hey, small, give me the third occurrence, which in this case will be 12, Control Z. So I'm going to put this inside of small. Now note it, whoops. small. All right, so there's that array. We've already seen that uh, it delivers an array. Now I'm simply going to say which one? Boom, that one right there, the third occurrence. Now this is an array format. Anytime you have an array operation in the logical test argument of the if, it doesn't matter where this if sits, whether it's in the aggregate or index, some of those functions that can handle array operations, or the small, which cannot handle array operations unless you do Control Shift Enter. So that's going to trump whatever outer function this is. We must enter this with Control Shift Enter. Now notice open the um, formula bar, those curly brackets got added in automatically by Excel. Now we use Control Shift Enter to tell Excel this was an array formula, but our Excel put those curly brackets in at the beginning and end to tell us that, yes, it understood that this is an array formula. That's the relative position that will go into index. When I change this to 2, boom, there it is, a 7. So now. I can simply do index. These are the rates I'm looking up. Comma, that whole big thing right there is just delivering a relative position. Control, Shift, and Enter. Now, index, if we had an array operation in the array argument, could handle uh, an array formula without Control, Shift, Enter. But remember, this if is trumping everything outside of it. All right, so we could 
avoid control shift enter if we took this little bit right here and I'm going to do control CC to open up the uh, I'm going to clear this control C I've loaded up the clipboard there that's in essence our filter right and what are we after what are we filtering we're filtering row numbers so I'm going to copy that I've uh, carried these two pieces over here now I'm going to come over and do my index and what am I looking up these values right here comma and instead of using the small inside of the uh, row number I'm going to use aggregate aggregates new in 2010 if you don't have 2010 or 13 you don't have this function and no way functions 14 to 19 can handle array operations everything earlier than 14 cannot so I'm going to say small which is 15 comma I'm going to get a divide by zero error so I want to ignore error so that's a six and no way that beautiful argument right there can handle array operations without doing control shift enter open parentheses and paste our formula element that creates a, an array of relative positions close parentheses because we need to do the subtraction and the adding before we divide open parentheses we have an equal sign in here we want to force that equal sign before we do the divide and no way check this out instead of the if we have the relative positions in the numerator the condition in the denominator when you F9 the divide by zeros are filtering out that's different than the if which use the um, false to filter out now we have a 5 a 7 and a 12 that 6 right there will uh, uh, help our formula avoid those divide by 0 control Z and since we have a 15 comma we just do our K which is small which one that 2 now I'm going to close parentheses on the aggregate F9 remember it's just doing just what the small did it's just delivering a relative position control Z close parentheses and enter no control shift enter now let's check this out if I get the first one we got Phil if I were to take Sue there is that uh, where is Sue 58 I take the second one looks like 18 I take the third one all the way down here point 81 all righty uh, we'll see you next video Hey, if you like the content of this video, the book, upcoming book I have, Control Shift Enter, it should be out in July sometime. The content of the video you just saw is straight from Chapter 4 in this book. All right, see you next video.